How's it going everyone? Hopefully you're doing well. And uh, today we're going to be doing something, well, a little bit different. Um, I'm going to be going through basically the tanks that you should get to learn how to play the game. Um, I've said that I'll do this a while ago um, and just never got around to doing it, but we're here now. So let's begin, shall we? Okay, so the easiest way of doing this, I might as well just show you everything in the tech tree and then we can go into each tank and talk about them. Um, there won't be any gameplay, um, but I will go through in detail about, you know, what to do with the tank and stuff like that. Now, the way this is going to work is that I will be going through tier 5, uh, tier 8, and tier 10. Um, now, these are kind of the tiers that you're going to spend the most time on. Uh, tier 6 and 7 are tiers where it's kind of just stepping stones, um, usually. Um, tier 6, you can... The tanks from tier 5 to tier 6 are usually very similar um, the only like thing that is different is that you know from like the KV-1 for example to KV-2 it's going to be slightly different because that is a very different tank but if you naturally progress on they're going to be very similar from each other so I will go through the heavy tanks, tank destroyers, medium tanks and light tanks and of course we are not going to choose artillery because I mean, you can learn how to play artillery in any tier, let's be honest. It's all the same. You just sit at the back of the map and shoot things um, and annoy everyone in the game. But starting off with tier 5 heavy tanks. To do that, KV-1. This is by far the best tank to learn how to play the game in if you want to learn the basics of a heavy tank. And again, tier 5 is really about the new players, the learning how to play the game, learning the way that a heavy tank does play, because um, it is different from a medium tank and it is different from, you know, I mean, I suppose that you don't really get many assault TDs at tier 5, but learning the basics of a heavy tank, you can really do that with a KV-1. Um, it gets good enough armor and a good enough turret as well. Um, let's go and max this out quickly. As you can see, this is now maxed out. It gets 840 hit points, uh, which you could HP boost, but I don't really recommend it. Um, I will be going through all the equipment that I recommend on each tank as well, so that you can, if you want to, spend extra credits and put some equipment onto your tank as well. Although, if you are a free-to-play player or something like that, um, then still you can, you know, use equipment, but you're going to need some demounting kits along the way if you want to uh, obviously demount them. So why is the KV-1 so good to learn how to play the game? Well, it's not too fast, at only 34 kilometers an hour, and it only has 10 power to weight ratio. So yeah, you're not going to get anywhere very quickly. However, you can learn how to side scrape in this thing. Now, what I mean by that is side scraping is where you go out Instead of just going around the corner, say like this, and then you just expose your whole tank and you die, you can actually go around the corner and imagine if there's a pillar right here, or even like block off part of the screen or something like that uh, during the uh, during the edit, and you only expose like this part of your tank. So you can then go backwards, you can then go fully expose your turret, and you can then shoot the enemy. But because this is completely flat. Anything that goes along here is going to just hit your tracks and not do any damage. And if it's as long as you've angled it correctly, you can learn how to side scrape really well in this tank. Um, it's very forgiving. Um, yeah, the tracks will eat quite a bit. Um, they're not like super thick on the sides, so you can still get penned there. But obviously, heat rounds and stuff like that, if they hit your tracks, they're going to be absorbed. Um, you can just learn how to angle your tank and angle the armor. And then once you've nailed that down, you can then start progressing up into the higher tiers. Um, because I feel if you learn how to side scrape at tier 5, you then can do a lot better at the higher tiers. If you just learn the basics of heavy tanks. And the majority of the time, side scraping is a big thing in heavy tanks. Your turret armor is good enough. Um, it's going to bounce lower tiers. It's not going to bounce higher tiers, and it's probably not going to bounce too many of your own tier if they're firing premium. Um, it will just be able to go straight through. Also, if they're firing premium at you, it's going to go straight through your frontal armor, which is why I re recommend side scraping. Always go at an angle. Try and make your hull as angled as possible. Even if you're out in the open, angle a little bit like this so that you're basically giving them that sort of an angle to shoot, and you might get some lucky bounces now and again. The gun on the tank is very, very nice. Um, you have the choice of two. 
Uh, you can choose if you're more, uh, if you're not a free to play player, then I would actually recommend you choose the derp gun and you load nothing but heat. Um, obviously, you can, you can load a little bit of HE just for, you know, finishing off targets. But this derp gun is very nice. <laughs> As you can see here, it gets 140 pen with 370 damage, which means that you are going to quickly destroy vehicles of your own tier in, you know, a matter of minutes, or not even that. It gets 2,400 DPM. Um, that is with the 450, but it is going to be closer to 2k if you use the heat on this tank. Um, so you're going to lose out a little bit, but not loads. Um, the other gun is uh, this 85 mil gun. Uh, yes, you do get slightly better pen with the premium rounds, um, but you get 120 standard as well, which is very, very nice. Uh, 120 is more than enough to go through the majority of tanks that you'll see. Um, obviously, higher tiers, it's not really going to cut it, um, which is where heat would be nice, especially uh, as heat doesn't lose any pen over distance. So 140 pen is going to be quite nice against flat armored targets, um, especially stuff like a KV-3. You should be able to pen that frontally uh, with heat. Uh, but yeah, there's your two guns that you can choose between the uh, KV-5. Um, it's a nice tank. Uh, you can watch me actually play it on the grind um, when I was grinding up through the 277 line. Uh, if you want some kind of more details about the tank. Um, I, I was just using <laughs> majority of the time just this um, and also this. But you can also, and it's a little bit of a hidden gem, use this gun. And this thing <laughs> this is stupid. This gun gets very nice dispersion, very, very nice DPM, and it shoots every 2.2 seconds. It does 85 damage, but this thing, this is the type of gun that you start shooting someone and they think, oh, it's 85 damage, doesn't matter. And then, I don't know, 20 seconds go by and they're dead. Because you just keep doing it over and over and over and over and over again. And then they start worrying because after about 10 seconds, they've lost like 500 hit points. And they're like, where's all of that gone? It's great. Um, I love this gun. It's such a troll gun. Um, and also it gets the highest penetration of any of them. So if you want to fire gold, which there is nothing wrong with that. 189 pen, which is one of the highest premium penetration rounds at tier 5. I think it's only... Well, for a heavy tank anyway. I think it's only outmatched by the VK. So yeah, the VK does have 221, which is going to be better than it. But at the same time, the VK's gun, although it's very, very nice, it's definitely not this. Like, this is really good. Um, you put some good equipment on the KV-1 and get that. Like, you get vents on it, stuff like that. Um, I'll tell you what, we can even go and have a little look. If we go to add, add to comparison, we just remove that. We then configure it to what it just was. And then we say we add vents. We add a rammer. And I mean, it's probably vents, rammer, and optics at this stage um, because the tank is pretty blind. And you have 2.6k DPM at tier 5. Now, for those of you that don't really know, this is more tier 8 medium kind of DPM. Very good. Very, very good. Combine that with good dispersion. Aim time's not great. Um, but, I mean, you could forgo optics if you want and then go for something, say, like a gun lane drive. But, honestly, I would just choose improved rotation. Gun lane drives are a little bit outdated now because of that, uh, that equipment. And if you're, you know, going to be using food, it's going to get even better. Like, combine that with Brothers in Arms if you have it. Like, 2.8k. That's more than actually the majority of tier 8 mediums. Like, that is insane DPM. And just because I can, why don't we just look at it with bonded equipment? Okay, well, it gets 3k free, free DPM. I mean, I don't... 
I'm kind of tempted to actually play this with this with this loadout and nothing but APCR and see what it does. Like I knew that it was it was really good, but I didn't know it was this good. I mean, I wouldn't use bonded on it. Like I would never use bonded on a tier five, but I'd put bounty on it. So yeah, let me know if you want a video on this with well, well it would be that. But let me know if you want a video on this. I think it'd be pretty fun. Anyway, that was the heavy tanks. Hopefully you got some insight into how you can play with the KV-1 and, you know, the different ways of playing it as well. I realized that took a long time and it's going to take a while for the tier 5s. But then once we move on to the tier 8s and then 10s, it's just going to be the same thing. But just obviously I'm just going to tell you what the tank is. Um, the only reason why it's taking a little bit longer at tier 5 is because I've got to explain, you know, how or why this is good. And then at least with the tier 8s, it is just literally the same thing, but just at tier 8 and you learn a little bit more at the higher tiers. Okay, for tier 5, medium tanks, there's a few. T-34, the M4A1, the Type T-34. I wouldn't recommend you choose this unless you're going to the Chinese territory though. Actually recommend the Skoda T-24. It's a decent enough medium tank. And the Panzer 4 h now let's start with the Panzer 4H because this is kind of the outlier of them all. Um, first of all, I think it's one of the best looking tanks at tier five. Um, I love all the side skirts and stuff like that. It looks really, really nice. Um, this tank's very good because of this gun. It gets AP rounds, heat and high explosive. Now high explosive has 53 pen and that AP rounds have 64. There is zero point of firing AP rounds in this tank. Um, simply because, why would you? Like, if it's going, if it's going to pen six, uh, like 64 millimeters of armor, it's probably going to pen 53. So I would, I would not, I would not not take AP, but take a very small amount. Um, if you're going to use this tank, I really just recommend Fire and Heat. However, there are other tanks, or other guns, sorry, such as this, uh, which gets an okay, you know, DPM-wise and stuff like that. Um, but they're not as fun. So, this is more of just a rolling around derp gun kind of, you know, tank. Um, it goes to 40. It's got decent enough power to weight ratio. It's not super, super fast, but it's a decent tank. Now, the T-34, if we just max this out, it does get the same gun as the KV-1. Meaning that, yes, this thing is very fun to play. <laughs> and yes, you can make it have 3k DPM if you want to. Um, this is why I recommend the T-34, is because of this gun. And you're never going to use, you know, that, like, realistically. Um, but... The T-34 is a solid vehicle. We just go back to it. This is a solid tank to learn how to play the game in. As we've already established, the gun is insane. Like, this DPM is really nice. You don't have to use premium either. Uh, 112 is usually enough to go through tanks. Um, but, you know, it's mobile enough because it goes at 56 kilometers an hour. Um, you know, you're entering kind of almost light tank territory at that point, at tier 5. 17 pound to weight, which isn't the best, since it doesn't have a lot of engine power, it only has 500 engine power or horsepower. So you're not going to get up to that top speed very, very fast, but once it gets there, you can get, get moving and uh, stuff like that. For all of these, I recommend you have vents, rammer, optics. That's going to give you the best across the board, mixture of view range and obviously damage. Unfortunately, you can't put V-Stab on this. It's just the way it is. But this is the way that you should learn how to play the tank. It's forgiving enough to new players. If you go out in the open, as long as you're not against higher tiers, you should bounce a few shots and then you should be able to get back into cover. So if you make a mistake, you can bounce a little bit and then come back. You're obviously going to lose health regardless. But this tank is a very, very good tank for that kind of forgiving nature. As I've already established, the gun fires like, like it's on crack. Like this thing 
just doesn't stop once it gets started, which means you can then learn how to perma-track people. Now, the only problem is that this, this gun won't get super high module damage. So you're going to be sometimes, depending on how much health the track has, especially if you're against HP boosted tanks, you might have to shoot this four times in the tracks to get it just to be tracked, and sometimes twice in the tracks normally. So keep that in mind. If you are around the side of a TD, you're going to have to fire twice, but that's not too much of an issue considering how fast this tank fires. Um, but there will be some tanks that you can just track once and be done. Remember, this is at tier 5. Not every single tank is going to have loads and loads of health in its uh, tracks. So it's, it's good in that respect to learn how to just perma-track someone. Obviously by perma-track I mean you just shoot the track wheel here, either here or at the back here. Now be careful because you're going to have to make sure, because some tanks you shoot the track wheel and it won't pen and do damage at the same time. And that's what you want. You want to be perma-tracking someone when, when doing damage. There's no point doing perma-tracking and you know, you're not getting any damage, unless there's someone else that is shooting the tank for you at the same time. So if you're gonna shoot, say for example this, make sure you get a nice angle and make sure you try and get into the tank at the same time. Um, this doesn't really have that issue because you can actually pen here, so you could just pen it straight away. It's not too much of an issue, um, but with the front drive wheel, you go through here at this angle, and you should be good. Now I'm not gonna go through the others because they're much the same as the T-34, just with slightly different guns. You can look through them and you, you can decide which one you want to go for. I would recommend the T-34. The others are just kind of down to you if you want to play with them. Okay, so for TDs, I would recommend the SU-85, the Stug, Wolverine, and finally the AT-2. However, the AT-2, is the outlier in this because it's you play this like a heavy tank it has stupidly good armor it has a very very nice gun as well as you can see here um, it gets kind of a similar gun to the t-34 and the kv-1 uh, with nice dpm um, it doesn't have as high dpm but it's uh, it's good enough um, you can also get the standard gun which is similar um, it just doesn't have as much pen as uh, the top gun you can also use a dark gun if you really want to. And yes, I can see it has 3000 DPM. Um, however, it does go down quite a bit. It loses 90 damage uh, with its uh, heat rounds. So it's not going to be insane, but it's still good, good enough DPM. I would just choose this gun if you're going to play this tank. This is the assault kind of TD and roll. If you want to learn how to play them, this is the tank to do it in. You can then, you know, it's much the same as just playing a heavy tank, but you've really got to be, kind of have the knowledge of where the enemies are at all times. Because if you don't, and they get around the side of you, and they perma-track you, you are dead. There is zero things you can do. You don't have a turret, you've got to just always face the front of the enemy, and never, never let them around the side or the rear of your tank, because you will die at that point. Yeah. That is how to play Assault TDs. You play it like a heavy, but you don't go all in, um, because if you go all in and you get tracked, and you've used a repair kit, it's over for you. You're dead. Now the Wolverine. Uh, this is actually a very flexible TD. Um, it gets very, very nice gun. Uh, 128 standard pen, and that can go all the way up to 177. Um, yeah, this, this is good. You are going to get penned everywhere, um, just so you know which is pretty much the same as all TDs in this game. If you're going to play TDs, expect if you get spotted and you get shot at, it's going to go straight through you. So just keep that in mind. You want to try and stay hidden as long as you can. Um, you can be aggressive in these, but you'll learn that over time um, just by you know playing the game, dying a lot, um, which is going to... A lot of a lot of people, you know, don't realize this, but you're going to have to die a lot in this game to actually realize when is a good time to push and when is a bad time to push. It just comes over time and you will learn in this tank when the ability is for you to go and be aggressive and go and get that kill and when it's not time to do that. Um, obviously, every single game is different. It's just how it is. Um, but yeah, this gun is very, very nice. Um, you have a very quick rate of fire. 
good enough DPM, good enough accuracy as well. Um, yeah, you don't have to play, you know, with gold rounds or anything like that. You can just spam the old AP rounds and you do good enough. Um, this has a fully traversable turret, which is why I included it. You will play almost exactly like a turretless TD. However, you do obviously have the freedom of moving around the map a little bit more um, and a little bit more flexibility when you do so because of the fact that you do have a turret. So you can actually get into positions as well where you can kind of face side on or even reverse and then shoot your shot, get straight back into cover because you have that turret. You can just point your tank in the right direction where you want to go next after you've taken the shot. So there is that to consider as well. Now, the Stug and the SU-85, which are pretty identical, um, playstyle-wise, anyway. Um, the Stug can't really bounce anything, but the SU-85 can, to a certain degree. Um, I wouldn't rely on it, but it can bounce a little bit. Um, yeah, the gun is very, very nice. And you get a few different options. Uh, you could go for the Derp gun. If you really wanted to, um, it can be funny, um, but I would just recommend you either go for this gun here, which is actually slightly less damage, but higher rate of fire, or you go for this gun here, which is higher damage, but a slower rate of fire. Um, both of them have their pros and cons. You're going to lose a little bit of penetration as well if you choose the uh, higher rate of fire gun. Um, and you're also going to lose a considerable amount of accuracy. Um, however, if you're, you know, making sure that you're in the right position and you're not super far away, then this could work. However, for the majority of people, I just recommend you go for the Top Gun, um, especially with this accuracy. This accuracy is really nice. Um, five seconds, nearly 5.7, nearly six seconds um, to load a 180 damage shell is might feel like a little bit of a long time but it's fine on honestly with the accuracy it doesn't miss too much um, and you can actually use this as a sniper um, sitting at the back of the map and when you do meet tier sevens you do have 194 pen if you need to go straight through them but yeah tds you're just gonna be sitting at the back of the map find a bush it's very boring and you have to have a lot of patience with the game but that's just how it is if you enjoyed that type of playstyle, then good on you. You can go and do that. You just find a bush, um, look at my map guides if you want to know where to sit. And yeah, that's, uh, that's TDs. Now, finally, the light tanks. I would recommend the A20. As much as this is not a super, super great tank, it's good enough uh, for the most part. Uh, it's good enough to learn how to play the game. I would not recommend this autoloader. I would recommend the 76mm. Um, it's not got great pen, but you're just going to have to deal with it because none of these guns have great pen, uh, let's be honest. Unless you go for this, uh, the 45mm, which, again, is kind of like the, um, <laughs> the KV-1 gun, which can be quite fun, but I would still recommend you just choose this. It gets nicer damage. Um, overall, um, although looking at it, this does actually get nice, very, very nice accuracy. So actually, you know what? Between the two, it's up to you. Do you want more alpha, or do you want slightly better uh, penetration, slightly better accuracy, but lower alpha? So yeah, it's up to you between them. They're very, very good guns either way. But yeah, this tank has enough of the characteristics of a light tank that you can learn how to play the game with it. We go and compare it quickly. Now with all light tanks at tier five, I would recommend you use binos, um, simply because you don't really have enough view range for you to be able to use uh, coated optics, as you can see here. It's not gonna really work, unless you have brothers in arms and situational awareness and recon, um, and you're using food, then you could use optics. But even then, you're only just getting to 445, which is the max spotting range in the game. As I've already mentioned in my camo mechanics video, if you can go above this, then you should, because the higher the, the value is, the much, much easier it is to spot. Um, 
And if you can get 509, obviously not many people at tier 5 are going to have that. But 450 is more than enough. Um, and you'll get a nice crew along the way. If you can choose vents as well, then even better. Um, but binos is the one that you want. You want to get this as high as you possibly can. Anything over 445 is good. Or as close to that as you can. Now the Leopard. Uh, this is another tank that you can learn how to play the game in um, as a light tank. I would not recommend the Top Gun. I would actually recommend the Autoloader. Just because it's just funny when it starts firing. It's got 12 shells in the magazine. <laughs> it takes 16 seconds for you to load all of them. And it's got 0.1 second in between each shell. But it's just hilarious. You get behind someone and it does 30 damage each shell. But... You know, times up by 12, you can quickly just rock up to someone, do 360 damage, and then leave. Which is... I think it's, I think it's hilarious. You, just, you can just go up to someone and just do that, and then run away again. It's great. Um, also, this thing is actually kind of heavy. It weighs 21 tons without anything on it. Yeah, you don't want to ram this thing. Like, at all. If you ram this thing, you're going to not be in a very good place afterwards. But yeah, this thing is just hilarious. You choose Binos again. Um, it does have exactly the same view range as the A20. But this is more just for fun. And just for, you know, messing around. Whereas the A20, I'd still recommend if you're going to be very, very serious in the game. And, you know, want to really improve and learn how to play light tanks. I'll choose the A20. Just looking at some other tanks. The Chaffee as well. Same view range as the A20. Um, if you're going down, you know, the American line. It's a nice tank to learn how to play. The ELC. Uh, I used to love this tank. This tank was so fun before they nerfed it. Um, yeah, this thing was really, really fun. Uh, as you can see, 120 pen with 240 alpha. This thing is... I mean, not only is it just invisible half the time, it packs a massive punch. Like 240 damage. At tier 5. But you got to remember, this is at tier 5. Not tier 6. Um, it does have a long reload. And it doesn't get very good DPM. Um, but, you know. Doing 240 damage is always funny. Um, watching that happen. Um, I wouldn't recommend this as your first tank, though. To learn how to play the game. I would recommend, obviously, the A20 Chaffee. Something like that. No point going for the Covenanter. Not a decent enough tank. Uh, there's nothing at tier 5 for that. And, you know, the others are just non-existent. So, yeah. A20, Chaffee, Leopard if you really want to. That's what I recommend. Now, just quickly, before we go into the tier rates, I'm going to put up on the screen now uh, some text about the equipment for the different uh, classes. Um, and this is going to be for tier 8 and tier 10 because they're very similar uh, with the equipment. So, for heavy tanks, you are going to have B-Stab, Vents, Rammer. They are the three that you want. However, if you feel like you have enough view range, you have enough, you know, you want, you want a bit more health, ditch out the Vents, put Improved Hardening on it, and you're good to go. Medium tanks. Vents. <laughs> Rammer. V-Stab. <laughs> the exact same as the heavy tanks. However, if you feel like you don't have enough view range, because medium tanks are a little bit more needed for view range, then ditch the vents and put some uh, optics on it. TDs, it's kind of up to you. I mean, vents and rammer I'd always recommend. But the third one, you can have camo net, you can have optics, you could have binos, you could have whatever you want, really. It's up to you. Um, however, whatever you feel for the tank is needed, then put it on. But vents and rammer I'd always recommend. For light tanks, optics, vents, CVS. Or you could remove the CVS for a rammer. CVS is Commander's Vision System, um, which helps out when people are in bushes and whatnot, or behind cover, um, and also when they're moving around and stuff like that. So it helps out quite a bit, especially if you have already high view range, and then you add CVS to it. It's very, 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 very powerful. Okay, so that took a while, didn't it? What else do I recommend at Tier 8 and Tier 10? This is going to be pretty quick because I've already explained everything. Um, KV-1 leads to the IS-3. The IS-3 is by far one of the best tanks to learn how to play the game. 
it's just by far one of the best. Um, yeah, that's what I recommend. If you're going to go for a heavy tank, you go for the IS-3. It's very forgiving most of the time. And yeah, you can, you can get some good games in it. The gun is decent. Um, yeah, there's not really much more to say. IS-3. Now, there is a tank in the game that I strongly believe is the best tier 8 heavy tank in the game. However, to get there is a real pain in the ass. I'm talking about the Carnarvon. Now this tank, I strongly and firmly believe is the best heavy tank at tier 8. It is a god tier heavy tank. However, to get there, <laughs> these are fine. These, however, I mean, Black Prince isn't too bad, but it's a bit poo. Um, these two in particular are awful. Okay? If you really want to learn how to play the game, I would recommend the Ice Free. The Carnarvon, however, if you can get there, and if you can play it, it's, the, it's, it's just one of the best tanks in, in the game. Like, tier for tier... I would actually say this is probably the best tank in the game. Like it gets god tier DPM, god tier accuracy. Like it's just everything about this tank is beautiful. It even has 400 meters view range. Base. Like this thing is amazing. And it has decent enough standard pen. And I mean when you fully max it out, it's just kind of a joke. Like I mean, tier 10s would be happy with that. Put it this way, actually. Apply. Right, what was it? Three point something. What does my chieftain have? All right. Okay. So, yeah. To say this tank's good and underrated, I don't see enough people talking about this tank. There's just, it's just such a good tank. Um. The Carnarvon Action 10, which is the premium version of this, isn't as good as this. The premium version is worse than this. It gets a worse gun, it gets a worse DPM, it's just everything's worse than it. Um, worse armor as well. Um, not to mention that you can't really like pen this thing reliably. Um, you're going to have to go for the Capola or you load heat and try and get lucky here. If this thing's hold down, this is like a tier 8 chieftain. Um, almost. There is obviously spots that you can pen, obviously here with heat and stuff like that, but this thing is god tier. It really is. So if you can get there, then you can then you play it, and you could honestly just have the time of your life trying to learn how to play this tank. Um, it is probably the best tank to learn how to play. Obviously, besides the Ice Free, the Ice Free is only there because it's so easy to get to. None of these tanks are hard to do. But yeah, the Ice Free and Carnarvon are the only two that I recommend. Um, there are other tanks, obviously. Um, but those two, I strongly recommend them. Medium tanks. T-44. That's it. You don't go for anything else. Um, yeah, this thing. You just learn how to play the game. You just learn from what you've learned at Tier 5. And you use it. You do not use the 100 and... What is it? 122 millimeter gun? Okay. No, you don't do that. You use this thing. This gun. Mwah. 190, 190 pen, 250 alpha. Good enough accuracy, good enough D DPM. This is a good tank. Um, there's nothing more to be said. You use this, you play what you've learnt from tier 5. You then try and use it at tier 8. And the reason why I say tier 5 and tier 8 is because tier 8, you start getting into some tier 10 games, um, and you'll you'll learn from that. Um, I still don't recommend, or f think that plus 2 matchmaking is a good thing. Plus 2, minus 2 is just awful. If you're top tier, you're not going to have a good time because there's less health. Um, and if you're bottom tier, you're just not going to have a good time because you can't pen anyone. So... Yeah, I just think plus two matchmaking is stupid, but 
you'll then learn about the different HPs of the different tanks and what alpha they have and stuff like that. So, yeah, you'll learn from it. Um, like with everything in this game, as I've said before, dying a lot teaches you a lot because the more you die, the more you'll then realize, okay, I can't do that. I mean, I'm not going to say don't get angry at the game because that would just be very hypocritical of me, right? But dying will teach you the most in this game. So T44. For TDs, I issue 152. I mean, this thing, even after it's been nerfed, you say nerfed, like it gets 260 pen, 750 alpha. If you want to just have a massive gun and just sit at the back or even go forwards and you can with this tank you can learn how to trade effectively um what do i mean by that well i mean with this tank you could actually go in you take a hit for say 400 damage and as long as you hit them back for 750 you've made an effective trade so you can then use that to your advantage but you need to be careful because you only have 1.2k hit points so you can't trade all the time. Um, and you'll learn over time when to push in, when to not push in, when to trade, when not to trade, um, and stuff like that. So, yeah, the ic 152 is very nice for that. And the other tank that I'd recommend is the Borsig. This is a beautiful tank. Um, it's got very good accuracy, very good aim time. Um, just, I mean, you get two guns. I would honestly just recommend the 12 centimeter gun. This thing doesn't really get spotted very often. Um, it's very sneaky and you can use that to your advantage. So if you are continuing along the line of, I want to be a sniper, I want to sit at the back in a bush, choose this. Now for the light tanks, there's a few. I mean, LTTB probably is one of the best. Um, you can also choose the Bulldog, although this is quite a fat tank, um, so it doesn't have great camo. So I would still recommend the LTTB. Orc 12 is just a no. So yeah, I would honestly just recommend the LTTB. The only other tank that I would maybe recommend is the Batchat 12T. Um, a lot of people hate this tank, but I don't. I think this is okay. It teaches you about the autoloader mechanic as well, so there's that to consider. Um, it does have four shells in the in the magazine. Uh, it takes 20 seconds to load them and two seconds in between each shell to fire. So, yeah, it's it's okay. 380 view range, which isn't that much. LTTB gets exactly the same. It also gets a massive gun for whatever reason. Um, it does get 216 premium pen, which is okay. Uh, but yeah, like both guns on this tank aren't too bad. Um, it's pretty easy to grind this tank. Um, 380 view range, as I already mentioned. Um, not as much as the Carnarvon, because the Carnarvon gets 400 for no reason. I don't know. Further proving my point that that tank is the best tank in the game, tier for tier. But yeah, LTTB, I'd recommend. You just go from what you've learned about tier 5, you find the bushes that you've been going in, and you just progress through that naturally. Now for tier 10. Probably my favourite tier in the game. Um, IS-7, 277 for heavies, uh, I wouldn't, I mean, I just wouldn't recommend anything else. Um, if you're just starting out at the game and you want your first tier 10, IS-7 and 277. IS-7 is probably a little bit more forgiving than the 277. Um, however, the 277 is faster um, and does have, objectively, a better gun. Um, however, like the IS-7's gun is more than enough. Uh, this was my only tank that I free marked at tier 10 actually. So yeah, this this tank's very very nice. Like, the IS-7 is just a solid all-round tank. I would go for the IS-7 first, rather than, one, rather than the Object 277. Um, so yeah, IS-7, then Object 277 if you really want it. Those two tanks will teach you how to play the game at tier 10. Obviously, I'm not going to mention it again. Everything that you've already learned from tier 8 and tier 5, you can then put into practice at tier 10. Ah, one thing that I forgot. Side scraping in the IS-3 and IS-7? No, no, no. You don't do that. Um, it doesn't work. With these two tanks, you want to be facing head-on to the enemy. Why? Well, with the IS-3, as you can see, 
it has a pike nose, meaning that the effectiveness of the armor is going to get worse as you turn like that to try and side scrape, because they'll just shoot here. Whereas if you're head on, they're going to be shooting here, it'll just bounce. The exact same thing is for the IS-7, but just really, really pronounced now, um, as you can see. They shoot here pretty much anywhere apart from your lower plate, they're not going to pen. There is a weak spot underneath the IS-7, but don't worry about that too much. So yeah, that was just a quick thing about side scraping. So don't try and side scrape in these um, as soon as you get to tier 8. Uh, these two are fine to side scrape. Medium tanks. Uh, there is two that I'd recommend you learn how to play the game in. That is the 140 and the Pattern. Now I've already said that I recommend the M4 um, because it's a, just a good all round tank. Um, I didn't go into too much detail about it because they're very similar to the others. Like this does get a derp gun as well if you really want to use it, but you know, whatever. The Pattern is a good all round tank. Um, let's go to Select Vehicle and Garage. Yeah, this thing is very, very nice. Um, 3.5k damage. Its gun can be a little bit derpy um, at times. Um, it gets more than enough standard penetration to go through pretty much anything. Um, and the other tank that I'd recommend is the 140, as you can see here. A lot lower profile than the pattern. Um, it also doesn't get as much uh, gun depression. Um, but this thing got buffed recently and now has just insane armor. Um, insane to a degree. It's insane in the fact that when you're wiggling around and, you know, moving, you can get some lucky bounces because if they if they shoot at you from hit like this angle on your upper plate, it's just going to bounce. However, if they're head on and they shoot you, it's probably going to just pen, especially if they have high enough um, premium rounds or you know standard rounds. Two six four is going to go through this. Um, I can shoot reliably um, at around here on the one forty with standard rounds, and it will just go straight through it. Um, also, capolas are pretty big. Um, the same with the pattern but you can't really see because of the 3D style. So if we just take it off, you can then see the Capoda is pretty big on the pattern. Um, and you can also get some lucky bounces on the lower plate, but that's just what the pattern is. Um, it's a little bit troll armor wise, especially if you have this style because it hides the majority of stuff, um, which I don't really agree with, but there you go. I'd recommend you get the 140 over the pattern first, um, simply because the 140 is a better tank. Um, the 140 you can properly harass someone with. Five seconds reload and super high DPM, you can perma track someone and there is nothing they can do. This tank is great. It gets similar, it gets four less pen than the pattern. So it's not, you know, anything to be worried about and also gets very very nice heat rounds as well so yeah there's nothing really bad about the 140 the only bad thing is that it can get set on fire and can get ammo racked quite a bit so if that happens to you for go vents and then put uh, improved config on or you just use a fire extinguisher and just hope that you don't get ammo racked that much now tds i'm actually going to only recommend one tank and that is the Gorilla 15. As you can see, I don't even have it. Um, just simply because I don't like TDs that much. But the Gorilla 15 is a tank that you can learn how to play that class at tier 10. This is a nice tank. I mean, you don't have to take everything that I say as, you know, gospel and like, yeah, I have to go and grind the Gorilla 15 now. If you've been at tier 5 and tier 8 and you think, you know what, I'm going to go and grind a tank that isn't you know, on this list, just have a look at them all and then just choose which one you want. If you feel like you've already learned the game enough at that point, then go for it. But the Gridder 15 is very, very nice. Good accuracy, good standard pen, good alpha. It's just a, the perfect combination of the sniper in World of Tanks. Now for the light tanks, there is... Again, only one thing I recommend, and that is the T100LT. I do not recommend an EBR. EBR will not teach you how to play the game. Um, at all. It just won't. Um, yes, the EBR is the best light tank in the game. Um, there's nothing you can really say about that. However, its speed can be 
a big downfall at the same time. Because, one, you don't have enough view range on that thing to really learn about the bushes and what works at tier 10 and what doesn't, whereas the T100LT does. This is exactly how I'd recommend you set it up. Uh, CVS, fence, optics. Uh, you could forgo CVS if you wanted to have rammer, for example. But yeah, this tank is fast enough to get into position, good enough to spot, as you can see, 580 meters view range. The gun is very nice. So you don't really have to worry about, you know, the, the gun not being good enough without V-Stab or Rammer or whatever. Um, you still have enough DPM with this. Uh, so overall, this is a good light tank. It's very, very flat and very hard to see. So, yeah, I mean, what more can you want? Like, if you've already been learning about light tanks, this should just naturally fall into the category. So, yeah. I, I fully recommend the T100 LT. Okay, so hopefully you did enjoy. This was a long old video. Um, yeah, it took me a while to make. And hopefully I put through what I feel is uh, the tanks that you should learn how to play the game in and that you can learn the game in. Um, and yeah, let me know what you think. Maybe I missed out some tanks that you think are really, really good. Or maybe you've had luck in some tanks. Let me know in the comments. Uh, as always, thank you very much for watching. If you did enjoy, leave a like on the video and subscribe. It helps me out greatly. And I'll see you all in the next one.